Before we get into the next show, let's talk about what happened during a weird, weird 97-98 season for Fox Kids. First, the obvious. Fox Kids was not doing well during this season. Could it be because of the removal of Margaret Loesch before the season started? Could it have been because of a new person in charge of Fox Kids programming? No. I don't think so. All of the shows were already greenlit before the 97-98 season started. Now, were there some changes to the Fox Kids schedule? Sure. But that partially had to do with the fact that after five years of dominating Saturday mornings and weekday afternoons, Fox Kids finally had competition. And amazingly... It wasn't Kids WB. It was one Saturday morning. But ironically, that wasn't the reason why they replaced almost every single show during midseason. Think of it this way. In May of 2017, Warner Brothers did a soft announcement for the new Animaniacs series. A series that won't be ready until 2020. So there's a good chance that Fox Kids may have been planning all this for maybe a year or a year and a half. So why did they replace almost every single show in the winter of 1998? Is this something that we can blame Saban for again? I don't think so. The sad fact of the matter is, most of the shows on Fox Kids had run their course. And Fox Kids was ready to move on. Bobby's World had been on the air for eight years. X-Men was ending, so was Spider-Man. Even with Fox Kids not knowing it at the time, Beetleborgs was going to end. Power Rangers was supposed to end with Power Rangers in Space, since Turbo wasn't doing all that well. Eerie Indiana was already in reruns. The only other shows that we don't know the reason why they were canceled was Casper, who didn't seem to be doing all that well on weekday mornings. And Life with Louie. So, with most of Fox Kids series finishing up, the network had to do something and find new shows that were going to fill the void the older shows had left. Unfortunately, by the time the 98 season came around, there was only going to be a handful of survivors. So let's start with the first show. You know what is the worst thing about public domain books? Somebody keeps making their own movie versions of those books. This is the reason why we keep getting Christmas Carol movies. This is the reason why fairy tales are retold all the time, even after the Disney version comes out. Half the time, they are rubbish. Other times, they are passable. And sometimes they are fantastic. A shining example of all of this is The Jungle Book. There are movies, cartoons, and live action series of this book. Most of them are boring, stupid, or both. There are so many of these things, and Fox Kids had one of them. I'm Toon Amp, I'm Tuned Up, and this is the history of Fox Kids, Mowgli, The New Adventures of the Jungle Book. Before we get started, I publish content of questionable quality whenever. If you like what you see, please hit that subscribe button. Or subscribe anyway, I'm not picky. You can keep up with me on social media or ring that bell to be notified when a new video comes out. With that said, let's do this thing. Now, for those who don't know, public domain books are books and characters that are no longer under copyright. So movie studios can use them as they please. This is kind of the reason why we get so many commercials featuring the Rankin-Bass version of Rudolph lately. And I know that Disney delayed the inevitable with Mickey Mouse, but once that Rodick becomes public domain, oh my god, you think the abuse of Rudolph is bad? An icon like Mickey Mouse would destroy everything. Pretty much everyone's fantasy drawings of Mickey on Deviant are will come to life. And I'm being tamed with that quote. Now Mowgli is an American made series that had 26 episodes, but it only aired for seven weeks before it was canceled on Fox. To be fair, it was given the 8 a.m. time slot, which is kind of the death time slot. But why did Sam and Max and Ninja Turtles The Next Mutation get three chances and this series didn't? What took it down? Was it the competition? Well, it was up against reruns of Pinky in the Brain, so no real threat from Kids WB. What about CBS? No, they stopped trying that year. So that leaves ABC. What took out Fox's Jungle Book? Reruns of 101 freaking Dalmatians. What? The show that wasn't even part of One Saturday Morning and for the second season, had no new episodes, and got tossed to the 12 p.m. death slot, is Fox's Jungle Book so bad that it lost out to reruns of Pinky and the Brain and 101 Dalmatians? Perhaps. Now, I wouldn't say that the Jungle Book is bad. It's not bad at all. Mowgli has this distinction of one of the few series at the time that has an ongoing storyline. 
instead of small individual stories. There are some, but there's an overarching plot here. But this could also have been the series downfall. After all, this came out before streaming online. So if you missed an episode, there was no way of watching it again. So essentially, kids could turn into the series, get lost, and then change the channel. The acting in the Jungle Book was fine. The storytelling was compelling enough, but yeah, there are some slow times as well. The story of Mowgli is the same. Mowgli was a child raised by wolves in the jungle. Only this time, a teenage girl, Najiri, and her father stumbled upon him. Another man discovers that the boy has a knife that has a symbol of the lost city of gold on it, and views that Mowgli is the key to finding the lost city. And they have adventures along the way! While it is nice that they do not use animatronics, puppets, or computer animation for the animals, they can still only do so much with them. And I don't think communication between the animals, you know, talking animals, would help because that would have been cheesy. And boy do we not want to look cheesy on this network! It's good for what it was, but it never did catch on, lasting less than two months. Fox could have at least let the series finish up during the summer or weekdays on Fox or Fox Family Channel. But that's the thing about Jungle Book TV series. They don't tend to last long. Unfortunately, I couldn't say much about this series. Truthfully, there isn't much out there about this series, including watchable episodes. I wanted to at least watch the seven that aired on Fox Kids before I passed judgment. Oh well. Next time on the History of Fox Kids, we're reviewing Aladdin the series. That can't be right. Oh, okay, I get the joke. It's not very funny. With that said, one simply does not judge a cartoon by what decade it is from, but by whether or not that cartoon entertained you. I'm Toonamp, thanks for watching.